each and every one of you for spending time with us. Now is that time, uh, you know, maybe you have a business and you're thinking, hey, you know what, my marketing strategies, not quite what they promised me. How can I make it a little bit better? Well, then you are going to want to not only read this book, it's called Fire Them Now, The Seven Lies Digital Marketers Sell and the Truth about political strategies that will help businesses win. That's right, we have special expert uh, of his own and founder of Go Big Media and Win Big Media, Philip Stutz. Good morning and welcome to the show, Philip. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about this. When it comes to the political sphere and businesses, how are the two similar and what can we use right off the bat to know like if it's working or not working in our strategy, especially our marketing strategy. Well, so here are the similarities, whether you work with a regular marketing firm or we work a lot of business co- you know, in companies, uh, Fortune 200 to small businesses, uh, we all do this one thing because the digital landscape has changed so much. So we all are constantly testing concepts, testing ideas, you know, going on to various social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we'll test different things. But I think the difference is in the way we do it in politics is, look, politics is like the ultimate startup company. You know, we start at zero. We have a candidate without any name ID. We have no money in the bank. And we've got to raise millions of dollars and then spend it all before Election Day. Right. Uh, and, and so it's crazy concept. But what ha- that does is that forces us from the very beginning when we don't have much money to go into those social media platforms and test them over and over and over again to see what works, but do it in a very small, with a small budget to save the client money and to figure out what works before we spend uh, the bigger budgets. And the difference is a lot, and what I've found in interviewing over 100 CEOs is that they, the, the marketing firms will come into these businesses and say, let's spend big five, six figures and test all these concepts. Mm-hmm. And then only after they spent them and figured out what didn't work and what did work, did they come back to them and say, let's spend more. So that's one of the lies that I talk about is you don't have to spend a ton to, be, to figure out what works. And I think businesses get so frustrated because the digital landscape is different than anything they've done before. You know, most right. of these businesses ran TV ads. They ran radio ads. They, and they found that their ROI was very easy to understand. And in the digital landscape, it is very difficult. And you really need a trusted partner with you to, to help you through that process. Well, and I'm glad you're talking about this because I've, I've talked to so many what I will call marketing gurus in social media, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and we both know them because they're a dime a dozen. And sure. when it comes to like, let's let's talk about the hard things, right? In politics, you've got a lot of the opposite side saying really bad stuff. I mean, we, we can in business, this is competition, right? This is nothing new. How right. do you take and in your book, I think you cover this going negative yeah. as an art. What, what does that mean? Uh, well, first of all, the most fun chapter I wrote in the book. And for any business owner, you'd be crazy. This is like the outlier of outlier strategies that if if you got the guts to do it and you do it well, could give you explosive results. And what it is is, look, you everybody. I'm going to say something that everybody, everybody in your audience has heard before. I am sick of those negative ads those politicians run. I don't want to see those anymore. Right? Mm -hmm. We see that every time. But by the way. In politics, we don't care <laughs> that people complain about negative ads because they work. Right. Uh, ultimately, you're utilizing enough messaging to change that voter's brain and, and trying to get them to vote a certain way. And so the, the concept is how can you take that idea and translate it into business? And the cool thing is we've done that. Uh, but I've laid out a couple examples in the book. Listen, you don't take a sledgehammer to someone's head in a business-to-business uh, comparative advertising campaign. That doesn't work. But you can do it in a very creative and smart way. And I've laid out a couple examples in the book. But one most recent example that's not in the book, but uh, is that uh, Wendy's went after McDonald's. I don't know if you guys saw this recently in a couple mm-hmm. tweets. Uh, McDonald's put out a tweet that basically their the staffer at McDonald's forgot to to you know uh, fill out the the whole tweet, and so it said something like "insert copy here" was the tweet, right? Oh. Right. right. And then they sent it out. And then Wendy's responded and says, your tweets are broken like your ice cream machine. <laughs> and and here's the point. That made you laugh, Aaron. That is exactly. funny. That is that does not hurt Wendy's brand at all. In fact, it's endearing to Wendy's brand. And it, it's free. Brand. I mean, that story has gotten millions and millions of hits. 
That is free advertising. And uh, there's another uh, example I use in the book. I don't know if you all remember this, but this is from about 10 years ago, which was the Apple versus the PC ads, where you had the, the nerdy uh, PC guy and the very hip, young, cool Mac guy. Do you all remember those ads? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Steve Jobs commissioned over 300 different ads. They only ran about 65 of them. And he meticulously picked out how to, you know, the ones he wanted. They didn't attack Microsoft. They just made them look uncool. And it was part of a grander strategy of the rollout of the iPhone and all. And, and Mac sales, you know, shot through the roof over the six months of the camp or the few years of the campaign. And it all led to, to Apple really launching into the stratosphere after the iPhone. Um, and so that, that is one, I mean, those are a couple of examples that I've seen recently of how to use sort of negative advertising in your business. Well, and, and I want to go back to your qualifications on, on what you're talking about. I mean, you have helped multiple Fortune 200 companies get to that next level. You've helped presidential campaigns. Can you, is there any inside scoop as to uh, maybe a story that you, you could share, or are you under uh, gag order there? <laughs> Not well on the on the political campaigns. No, I'm not. But on uh, the corporate side, you know, it's interesting. Uh, a lot of our corporate clients are like, ah, we'd rather not talk about what we do because you work in politics, and there can be, you know, they want to work with us, and that's fine. But I'm under a sort of NDAs on those yeah. uh, non disclosure agreements. But you know, on the political side, uh, I, I, this is a, a good one. There was a, a candidate I worked for a few years ago. He was uh, he was originally on The Apprentice, the first season of The Apprentice. And okay, yep. And uh, he decided to run for Congress. And you know, we basically told him, "Hey, here is how you run your campaign effectively. Here is what you need to do." And he just decided he didn't want to raise money; he just wanted to use it as a publicity stunt. And you could tell there was an inauthentic nature of the campaign. The, the candidate was actually a really nice person, but he wanted attention. He didn't want to run for office for the right way. And he uh, came to me one day and he said, I've decided to stop raising money, to stop running the campaign the way we, you've been advising. And I'm going to I've signed an agreement to do a, uh, a, a reality show for my campaign. And I went, well, you're not doing it for the right reasons. And you know what? I'm going to walk away. And we walk away from clients all the time that don't have the don't have the right, you know, are doing it for the right reasons. And so uh, he turned his campaign into a reality show. Uh, he ended up getting 30 percent of the vote lost in a landslide. And one of the things that I talk about, whether you're a business owner or a candidate, is you have to be authentic in the way you lead mm -hmm. and the way you communicate with your customers and with your clients. Ultimately, I saw so much frustration, Aaron, in this process with business owners right. uh, that at the end of the book, I actually create a free audit for any business owner to go in and they can put in all of their public uh, digital marketing, all of their social media platforms or website, and my company at no cost and no obligation will go in and do a complete audit of everything a business is doing and give you a scorecard. And we'll tell you if the marketing firm you're you're utilizing is screwing you over with by you know, with money. If they're trying to overspend, uh, where the, you know not try to save the business money. And so we've created that. Uh, it's at the back of the book. It's a free gift for anybody that gets the book. And we typically have charged our clients five thousand dollars for that. But I was so motivated to help businesses, not to get business, but to help them, that we created this complimentary audit, and we buy it for anybody that's interested in utilizing it. Well, I want to say thank you for doing that. Now, I understand uh, your reason for writing this book comes under something that there was a diagnosis of some, and you're getting it treated. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so I uh, was diagnosed about six years ago with uh, an incurable esophageal disease uh, that is incredibly rare, uh, especially if you're someone my age, my age I'm 43, and um, for the first five years of the disease, I didn't do anything, I listened to all the doctors, I threw medications all in my mouth all the time that were not, you know, that may have been a band-aid but weren't helping my long-term health. And there was a certain point that I just couldn't take that anymore. And I had doctors at the Mayo Clinic tell me that the disease is what it is and that I was just going to have to live with it and take medicine the rest of my life. And so I, I was paralyzed. And, and I make the comparison that just like a lot of business owners are paralyzed these days in, in kind of going into the disruptive economy that's coming. 
Well, ultimately, I decided, out screw this, <laughs> I was going to cure an incurable disease or figure out a way to get it cured. Right. And that was one year ago. And in that one year's time, um, I have, in a very circuitous route, uh, I'm about to enter into a one-man clinical trial that they will, in, at Johns Hopkins University, they will insert stem cells into my esophagus to try to regenerate what I have is called a dead esophagus. It does not work. Uh -huh. And they are going to try to, uh, they're going to grow, they're going to extract stem cells out of my calf. Uh, they're going to culture them, grow them, insert them into my esophagus. It's never been done before. It hasn't even been done on animals before. Uh, but, but it looks like it's going to get approved by the FDA. I'm the only participant. And it was all because a year ago I said I needed to innovate and disrupt my disease. And in a way, it motivated me to write this book because I kept seeing for years and years and years business owners so frustrated in the marketing space and how to grow their business. And it was I was doing it in a parallel universe. And so once I figured out that, if, man, if I just innovate and don't listen to the doctors and, and go in my – I mean, I listen to doctors but not listen to them <laughs> tell me I can't do something. Right. Uh, and I no. said, dang, I can do this for businesses. And that's where the book came about. Well, I want to say, uh, first of all, we hope a speedy recovery happens to you. And I, I, I've been reading on stem cells even for like growing teeth again. It's pretty amazing what they could do. I did not know they could take it out of your calf. I think uh, I'm, I, I would have to think twice about doing that. But I, I have to say, you are a braver man than I am. And I want to say congratulations on your success with this book. It's it, uh, People can order it right now. Where do they get it at? Yeah, it's uh, it's on Amazon. In fact, for your audience, we discounted the ebook, the Kindle version, for thirty percent. You can get it for six ninety nine today. Nice. Uh, so if they want to go get it, uh, we'll put it on. We put it on for six ninety nine for your audience. All right. So there you go. There it is. Fire them now. Yes, you're talking with Philip Stutz. Thank you very much, Philip, for spending time with us here on the morning show. Hey, thank you, Aaron. Y'all have a great day. Thank you, we will. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back right after these messages and go check out the book.